Shut up! I'm a shark! Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music shark. And it's time for a review of the new Megaton Leviathan record, past 21, beyond the Arctic Cell Thunderdome of Doom! Megaton Leviathan is a Portland-based metal band. This is their second full-length LP. And just from the cover of this record, I anticipated doom metal, or at least just something that is slow and brooding and kind of dreary and atmospheric. And I did certainly get that when I gave this album a listen. Proof that you can sort of judge things by their cover, sort of. However, I did not expect this record to have such good production and bring such passionate melodies to the table and a wall of extra instrumentation backing up those heavy guitars and drums. This record is four songs that number up to 40 minutes altogether, so there are some lengthy tracks here, 13 minute songs, eight minute songs. For some people, the lengths of these tracks, if you're not familiar with doom metal, might be a little taxing, but personally I found a lot of these songs clicking with me instantly. Take the opening track here, Past 21. It starts with this really slow, eerie, kind of creepy, twangy guitar melody. It felt like something of a, a throwback to the traditional world of doom metal, but there was just something about the way it sounded, something kind of weird that just intrigued me and made me want to stick with it. And as the song progressed, we got these droning guitars and cymbals, some glistening synthesizers, what sounds like synthesizers. And then once the bass guitar and the drum groove comes through, there are these really heavenly, chorus vocals that sound gorgeous. Even though they're playing with a lot of the same instrumentation and are playing at the same space, the band's mood shifts instantly from kind of mournful to really heavenly. This track sounds like death, and then beyond there being just lifted up into the heavens, the afterlife, it was true, the bright light, ah. On this track, I get the really grand guitar melodies of a band like Paul Bearer, and the strings hanging in the background, really thickening up the wall of guitars from a band like Sub Rosa. And then there are some horns and just kind of an eerie, gritty atmosphere to this music too that actually reminds me of Godspeed You Black Emperor, or maybe a band like Ohm, or grails. And even though this is a longer track, for me there's not really a moment where it lulls or feels boring because the band is really great at just pacing the instrumentation out so that something interesting is always happening. Even though this band is very heavy, there's a lot of finesse to how this track comes together. The Godspeed vibe intensifies on the next track, The Foolish Man, which begins with a bit of sitar, with some strange, reverbed, fluttering tones, and then a guitar riff drops in that kind of sounds like it could have been lifted off the new Earth record. But then beyond this riff being introduced, the band continues to build and build and build until they've reached yet another Godspeed-esque wall of sound. As obvious as their influences may be, I really do like the crossroads of influences that come together on this record. Vocals get introduced on this track and they are incredibly deadpan. They are devoid of any semblance of joy whatsoever. And even though I could see people getting kind of turned off by these vocals, just how unpleasant they are, I do think they add a lot to the emotional heaviness of the song. But overall, I don't feel like the vocals are as skilled in execution as much of the instrumentation here, which is incredibly apparent on the closing track here, Here Come the Tears, even though I do love the refrain of that song. Here come the tears. The singing takes a really weird, dissonantly harmonized approach on the song Arctic Cell, and it doesn't really offer too much beyond that, a really heavy riff and a kind of ham-fisted guitar solo right in the middle of the track. Unfortunately, the progression on this track is really not quite as riveting as it was on the previous two songs. The song really doesn't start getting exciting until the last third where we're getting these chugging guitars, these metallic pings, and then out of nowhere, the heaviest, deepest, most grimy, distorted riff on the entire album is introduced and it's just headbang city. Overall, I thought this was a pretty good record. I thoroughly enjoyed about half of the album, and the spots that I wasn't totally head over heels for were 
all right. I love the guitar tone. I love the heavy production. I like the melodies for the most part. I like the arranged instrumentation that is worked into these tracks. It's just really the vocals that I think need to get kind of cleaned up a little bit. And even though I think the collection of influences they have thus far is, is really impressive, I think the potential for all these sounds coming together goes a little deeper than where the band is currently pushing it. Still, I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Tran, Zishin, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Megaton Leviathan, Forever.